In chapter 17, we're going to look at drugs for the treatment of respiratory disorders. We're not going to look at um, allergic uh, rhinitis. But this is basically runny nose. We're just going to look at respiratory disorders, which is asthma and COPD. So the common ones we're going to look at are asthma and COPD. And we'll look at the difference between asthma and COPD, but just know that both of these um, conditions or both of these respiratory diseases, they cause wheezing, your chest can feel tight, and you, you have a difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath. So with asthma, I encourage you to watch this short two-minute video that explains what happens to, uh, to you if you do have asthma. But basically what happens when you have asthma is that your airway gets constricted, so it's really hard for you to breathe. So when you breathe, the air goes from here, um, and it enters into your air sacs or alveoli. And when the air enters, it's a very constricted airway, which makes it really hard for you to breathe. The good thing about asthma is that it is reversible. So there are treatments available to prevent this airway from constricting. What can cause asthma? Well, there's many reasons. Um, you could be allergic to something, exercise, so exercise induced, um, they say, which means that sometimes when you exercise, you can get asthma. When you're stressed, you can get asthma. If you're around um, a lot of smoke, for example, so you're, what's in the environment around you, if the environment is polluted, that can cause asthma. And as we know, asthma causes a shortness of breath and wheezing. So it's hard for you to breathe if you have asthma. So why is asthma important for us as dental professionals? Well, if we see patients with asthma, we need to make sure that we minimize their stress because stress can cause asthma. So we want them to be as comfortable as possible when we're treating them. Also, anytime we have a client that has asthma, we want to encourage them to bring their inhalers. Yes, we do have inhalers in our medical um, emergency kit, but we want to encourage them to bring their own. And we usually ask them, or I usually ask them to take it out of their purse and leave it on um, the counter or on the lap somewhere, um, hands-on, so that if they have an asthmatic attack, we're not fidgeting through their purse or through their bags to find it. It's it's there. Should they use? Should they need it? So, anytime we have a dental appointment, the asthma sh inhaler should be right there. Should be out there so we can see it. COPD. COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, and there is a video that shows you um, or that talks more about it. One key thing to note is that it's irreversible. That means that if you have COPD, you, there's no cure. Um, we have strategies to help you manage the COPD, but there's no cure for COPD. Um, remember, asthma is reversible, so there are ways we can um, treat it. But with COPD, we just have to manage it. And what COPD really is, is that when you have COPD, if you look at the air sacs or your alveoli, you can see that there's lots of mucus. Um, there is uh, destruction of the alveolar wa walls. And what that really means is that in a healthy lung, if we were to breathe here, this is very elastic, so it would open up and then it would close when you breathe out. But if you have COPD, you won't be, it's, this is not elastic, you won't be able to um, fill this nicely with air and then um, it won't close when you want to breathe out. So the elasticity is gone, the, the alveolar walls are kind of destroyed and you have lots of mucus and all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, not a fun uh, it's not fun to have COPD because it really affects your lifestyle. 75% of people who have COPD are smokers. So um, it's very common with people who are smoking. Now you guys are familiar with inhalers. The fancy name for an inhaler is called MDIs, which is metered dose inhaler. And so the advantages of this is that when you, when you, you know, administer that pop, the medication or the drug goes right into your bronchioles, which basically are the branches. It goes right into your branches and goes where it needs to go so that you can breathe better. It's a bronchodilator. And what that means is that it opens up the airway. So this airway, when you're breathing in the air, it opens it up. So it's easier for you to breathe. And it's really quick. 
So as soon as you take that puff, you should feel better right away. There's something called a spacer, which um, you may have seen. So the mouth goes over here, the nose and the mouth goes over here, and then you attach the inhaler or the MDI to the spacer. And the advantage of having the spacer is that when you administer the drug, the, the drug goes through the spacer and enters into your body and you get more of the drug in your lungs. So you get an increased amount of drug in your lungs. So it works better. So the spacer is good to have because you get an increased amount of drugs in your lungs. So what are some medications that are used for asthma or COPD? Well, we have short acting and long acting, and I'll let you know what that is in a minute. But I want you guys to look at this term over here. So beta-2 agonist, which means it's a drug that helps um, the beta-2. And what is beta-2? So remember, when you see the word 2, think of lungs. So this is a drug that helps the lungs. If it was a beta-1 drug, then this is a drug that helps the heart. Because we have 2, it's the one that has or that helps the lungs. And how do you remember? Well, there are two lungs, one lung and two lungs, right? So there's two lungs. Beta one refers to heart because there's only one heart. So when you see beta two, immediately think lungs. This medication is helping the lungs. So albuterol, uh, provental or ventolin, those are all names of the medication that are short acting. And what short acting means is fast acting. So if I have asthma and I take albuterol, that's amazing because I'm gonna feel better right away. It's quickly, it's fast acting. It acts really quickly. How can you remember this? Well, A is um, you know the first letter in the alphabet. So you can think anything, if, you know, if it starts with A, it's probably fast, right? Fast acting. Um, other people have said, that provental, how can you remember that provental is short acting or fast acting? Well, if you're a pro at venting, so think of pro vent. If you're a pro at venting, you're gonna vent really fast and you're gonna feel better as soon as you vent, right? So pro venting it means you vent really fast or really quickly. And so it's short acting or it's fast acting. You feel better right away after venting immediately. Um, Ventolin is another short acting or fast acting beta 2 agonist. And how can you remember that? Well, someone said if you drink venti, so think of vent or venti coffee, if you chuck down the coffee really fast, you might feel better right away. It keeps you awake um, and, and you're, it just, you just feel better right away, right? So it's fast acting, short acting, or it works really fast. So when you drink this coffee, you feel better right away. When you pro-vent, if you're a pro at venting and you vent really fast, you feel better right away. Um, when you take albuterol, A is the first letter on the alphabet, you feel better right away. Okay, So short acting means you feel better right away. So if you have asthma and you take these medications, you're going to feel better right away. Then we have long-acting beta-2 agonists. And th these are medications where you need to take this medication for a long period of time for you to feel better. Okay, so it's not, you don't feel better right away. You have to take this medication for a long period of time, this long acting, for you to feel better. So salmeterol is a medication that is long acting. And how can you remember this? Well, when you look at this word, can maybe think of salmon. And when you think of salmon, if you're on a salmon diet or a Mediterranean diet that is, um, you know, mostly, you're eating mostly salmon, think of it helping you make you live longer because when you're on a salmon diet you're supposed to live longer so when you think of salmeterol you live in longer another way you can remember this so salmeterol again is a long-acting beta 2 agonist it's a drug that helps you um, with your asthma so salmon roll you can think of salmon roll and it's really really hard it takes you a really long time to roll the salmon roll because um, you know you have to roll it really, really slowly and really, really carefully. So it takes a long time to roll salmon rolls. Okay, so that's how you can remember salmon roll, salmon rolls. And um, this word over here, syrup event. Think of severe vent, maybe. So if you are venting severely, if you're a severe venter, you're gonna be venting for a really, really, really long time. So long acting. Okay, so those are just some tricks that um, I have learned over the years that people have told me that can help you remember what's long-acting 
and what's short acting. It may help you for your board exam. Now, when someone are or when someone is taking inhalers like salmeterol or albuterol, they also may be prescribed a corticosteroids. And the reason why is that when they take a corticosteroids, it doesn't really help with their asthma, with their asthma attack, but it helps with the recovery period and it decreases the chance of them dying. So it's really important to take corticosteroids if prescribed with asthma. So you're taking the inhaler and you're taking the corticosteroids. So you could inhale it or you could um, be prescribed an oral medication like prednisone, which is really common. Now, the important thing to know is that if you are inhaling corticosteroids or um, swallowing corticosteroids, always swish with water because if you don't swish with water there's a higher chance of you getting candidiasis and candidiasis is thrush so this is the adverse effect of corticosteroids important to note this one thing to note is that this medication over here which is called uh, fluticasone fluticasone is a medication so this is a corticosteroid and with fluticasone how can you remember this well, someone told me think of flute when you're playing the flute, you need to be able to breathe effectively. You can't be congested when you're playing the flute. So um, when you hear this, when you see or hear this word fluticasone, think of flute. And when you need flute, when you play flute, you need to be able to breathe effectively, right? So this is a medication that helps you breathe. So it's for asthma. Think of playing the flute. Leukotriene modifiers, these are medications that are listed over here that helps modify or helps, um, yeah, modify the leuko leukotriene. And what are leukotrienes? Well, when we have asthma, your body automatically senses that we have asthma or something's wrong, and so they release chemicals. And these green dots are called leukotriene chemicals. And what leukotriene chemicals does is that it somehow constricts the airway um, smooth muscle. And so that makes it hard for us to breathe. So it constricts the airway. So what the leukotriene modifiers do is it prevents these chemicals from constricting the airway. So it opens up the airway so that we don't have, we can easily breathe. We're not, we don't feel constricted when breathing. So how can you remember this? Well, leukotriene modifiers have the word L-E-U, which sounds like leukotriene. It could have L-U-K, like these. Um, terms over here or these drugs over here. So think of leukotriene modifiers when you see th these um, letters in the drug name. And again, there are other medications, but the ones that I have highlighted are the ones that I want you to know. Um, this one, someone told me that theophylline is a type of medication that helps asthma and COPD. And this is an a medication that has a lot of side effects and severe, severe side effects. So what they say is that a trick that they use to remember this is that Theo comes from the word or, or it sounds like it actually it comes from the word God or God like. And so because these side effects are so severe, what they say is that if you take this medication, Theophylline, then you are going to see God sooner because you may because the side effects are so severe. So you may um, you know, pass away and see your God sooner. So Theo for God or God-like, and it has severe side effects. Okay, thanks for listening, guys.